Judy, I'd like you to start us off, please. Okay. Good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Heidi Neubauer, President of the United Way of Door County Board of Realtors. On behalf of the United Way of Door County, thank you. United Way has spent the last 15 months learning the child care strengths, weaknesses, and challenges in Door County. Child care is a national challenge, but as we know, Door County is unique in almost every situation, and child care is no exception. Last week, we shared our last 15 months of research with the community. A recording of this presentation can be found on YouTube. Just type in United Way of Door County and look for the Brain Builders logo for a presentation dated May 18th. Child care impacts every aspect of our community. Whether you have children or not, the presentation from the 18th explores this in further detail. This is why United Way of Door County is focusing on child care because it impacts our entire community. United Way is here to build a community where all people can achieve their full potential. Thanks again for joining us tonight. I'm now going to turn things over to Amy Conley. Thanks, Heidi. You're welcome. As most of you know, I am the executive director of our United Way here in Door County. I am so pleased to see so many of you here tonight. I get to scroll to multiple screens on Zoom. Um, so that always is a good thing. So we thank you for joining us. Um, Tonight, I wanna to thank our special guests and they will be introduced shortly. But tonight I wanna to introduce Christina Studebaker first. So Christina is our Community Impact Director for Financial Stability. And she has been with us full time since January of 2020. So that is not a time anyone really wanted to start a brand new job. <laughs> About financial stability. <laughs> Around financial stability uh, two months before a pandemic hit. Um, but she hit the ground running. She did not let COVID stop her. And as we all know, we had some childcare challenges come up in the last year as well that we did not predict. But she continued to move forward with this project. And we are really happy to have everyone here tonight to share our work and to continue the conversation around childcare. Christina? Thanks, Amy. Thank you all for joining us. Before we go any further, I do want to take a moment and um, at least introduce our, our guests and recognize them. They, they're not being asked to comment on anything tonight and we have multiple screens, but just <laughs> um, in case anybody does want to say hello, we've got Senator Andre Ja. Hello, I uh, appreciate this opportunity. Uh, just mentioned, I, I uh, certainly have an interest in this area. I'm on the board of Family and Child Care Resources of Northeast Wisconsin, so we're very involved in the uh, provider assistance, the parent training, we do the home visits and uh, the Young Star rating. Uh, I'm also on the board of the uh, Paul Van Handel Foundation that works to provide child care opportunities for children with special needs. Uh, so I actually have another one of these virtual meetings and in-person meetings coming up in the Fox Valley uh, on June 7th. So, um, but appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to hear your ideas tonight. Awesome, thank you so much. And we have Representative Joel Kitchens. Yeah, hi, um, thanks for putting this on tonight. And uh, I'm also just looking forward to the discussion. Great, and then um, from Representative Mike Gallagher's office, we have David Brooker. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Looking forward to learning from you guys. Sorry, so I'm doing like dad duty tonight. <laughs> awesome. So um, just some housekeeping issues before we get started. Uh, so we do have people who um, asked beforehand to speak during this meeting. So we have a list of them and we've given people time limits in order to allow everyone um, fair time uh, in order to speak. So I will be using a timer and once we get to the three and a half minutes, I will 
jump in and cut you off if you haven't already finished, just in order to allow everyone to speak in the time allotted. Um, we ask that you keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. Um, if anybody does have a question for the speaker, the people from the community who are speaking, or they want an opportunity to say something if we have time remaining at the end, you can put a note in the chat box. And I think given that we have multiple screens, that is easier for us to catch than you using like a raise hand function or something like that. Um, also, our internet is a little quirky and your internet might be a little quirky. Um, if your internet goes out, you can jump back in and we will be watching the, the waiting room and we'll let you in. This is also being recorded. Um, what's a little trickier is if our internet goes out. <laughs> and it does happen. And then Amy and I both go poof. Um, you guys, please go ahead and continue to make the most of our guest time. Um, those of you who are speaking, you have the list and we know that you can just forge ahead. There's absolutely not a reason to wait for Amy and I to come back in. We will come back in when we can. So, um, I think we are ready to roll unless anybody has any other questions or anything. Or Amy, you think there's something else I need to mention that I haven't? I think we're good to go, Christina. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna start with the uh, next competitor in the cutest contest um, of the night. So we have Lauren Bry and her daughter, Rosella. Lauren is a new parent. She's a young professional and um, she's a Southern Sturgeon Bay resident and I'll let her say more. Thank you, Christina, and thank you, everyone. And yes, Rosella is joining me tonight. Dad is in the chopper. Um, I'm Lauren, and my husband, Jacob, and I live south of Sturgeon Bay. Rosella is about nine weeks old. Uh, I grew up in southern Wisconsin and have lived here for seven years with Jacob. Uh, we farm with his brother and sister-in-law. We milk cows on our uh, farm here, and we also raise some beef cattle and grow crops. I do work off the farm full time for the Dairy Business Association and Edge Dairy Farmer Cooperative, um, as well as Farmers for Sustainable Food. And through my role with those organizations, I support farmer led conservation groups in the state, including Peninsula Pride Farms, which I'm sure um, you're all familiar with uh, here in Doran Kiwani County. And I really enjoy my job working with farmers um, and then, you know, having our own farm here. And it's important okay. to me to go back to work. Um, balance that bringing our daughter and working to find child find child care since we found out we were having a baby in July of last year I immediately got on the wait list at door community child care center as I heard it was um, a struggle to find child care here and between um, August of 2020 and today we have been looking for child care to try to figure out what we're going to do when I return to work in less than four weeks so um, I'm just going to share a little bit about my story and um, the challenges. So once we got on the wait list at Door Community Child Care Center, I continued to look for other options in case we didn't get a spot. Um, luckily, my husband's family is from the area and um, knows a lot of people. So we asked around to people they knew. I joined some Facebook groups for moms up here. Um, and I also even looked on care.com. It definitely was nerve wracking and it was a struggle at times because I was still working full time. Um, and we were busy on the farm and we were trying to buy our first home. And Zella was going to arrive. I contacted at least four or five different people who did in-home care. Uh, we thought we had one lined up, um, but they backed out as one of their part-time people wanted to go full-time. Um, then I found another person who was going to quit her job to watch um, Rosella along with several of our friends' children. Um, and that was the route we were planning to go until a few weeks ago when she found out her job was going to give her insurance in the next year. So that option um, was no longer what our plan was going to be. Uh, luckily, I had stayed on the wait list at Door Community Child Care Center and was hoping for a spot in September when they said there would be more um, positions when um, the oldest kids would go to school full time. So that was still leaving me with a gap for two and a half months um, because I'm going back to work here in June. So through asking around and in a Facebook group, I did find a teacher who was willing to watch Rosella through the summer. 
was for other children and her own kids. It wasn't ideal, only option at the time. Um, I'm excited to share that today. I got a call that there's an open spot at Door Community Child Care Center on June 7th, the week before I'm going back to work. So it's seriously a huge relief. Um, I mean, I just, I've been avoiding thinking about going back to work because I didn't want to think about what we were going to do because we didn't have anything lined up. Um, so I'm lucky that my in-laws are here and our fam and my husband's family. Um, and I have a niece um, who's at Door Community Center right now. So, you know, they're connected and we were able to ask people we knew. But I can't imagine being somebody moving up here and not knowing anybody and trying to find childcare, trying to figure out what to do. And we do have great options. Um, I've heard nothing but wonderful things about the Door Community Center in particular. But again, spots are limited. That was, um, you know, definitely a challenge. And with the young professionals group up here prior to having Rosella, um, I knew we were trying to attract more young people to work in our communities. So I think, you know, this is a really important issue and I appreciate everyone's efforts and working on this and recognizing it as a challenge. And I hope that we can all work together um, to find more options for young families and support those who do provide this really um, important service to all of us in our community. Um, so we can Thank help. You, Lauren. Thanks Sorry. for being I feel like it's like some game show contest. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate you sharing your story. Um, next, we have Corey McFarland. She's the Deputy Director of the Door County Department of Health and Human Services. It would help if I unmute. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to start out talking from an employer perspective. Our Department of Health and Human Services employs about 95 people. And we've gone through a shift over the last several years. Um, we did have a lot of older people retire um, within the past five to 10 years. So now we have a lot of young professionals working for us. Many of them have young children and childcare is definitely a challenge for them. Um, this was definitely made worse during the pandemic. Lots of people had to scramble to make arrangements for a couple of months while childcare was not available at all. And even now they um, have to make alternative arrangements when their children need to quarantine or their daycare provider shuts down for a while. And we expect that this is probably gonna be the situation we're facing for a little bit of time to come here. We currently have five or six pregnant moms in our department, three of them in the same unit. So it's gonna put us in a bit of a crunch. Every time somebody tells us they're expecting, we're of course excited for them, but we always wonder whether or not they'll come back primarily because of the challenges with childcare. And that's a big burden on an employer, um, large or small in our community. And some of our more senior employees have left specifically to stay home and care for their grandchildren because their kids had no other options. So our workforce has suffered because of that as well. Um, our department has made some efforts to try to increase the supply of child care. We have worked with the Child Care Resource and Referral Agency and our certifier partner um, to try to encourage new people to get certified to do in-home care. Um, we've had several evening and daytime events um, to provide information. We've offered to waive the certification fee, provide assistance, look for other kind of cash assistance to help a startup. We've had no response from this. One of our meetings had one person who was interested. She did not follow through. The others had zero level of interest. So it's been an ongoing challenge for a number of years. Um, and we really think that having a provider regulated um, really can help to boost quality. It, it's not to say that unregulated providers are not quality options, but having regulated providers gives us access to Wisconsin Shares funding, um, it, and it just allows for a different level of oversight, and it makes them more um, able to access resources and assistance that they would not have if they were not regulated. Um, so this remains one of our goals to try to increase that um, avenue for child care. And then I'm just going to speak a little bit to the impact on the children and families that our department serves. We serve some of the very most vulnerable in our community, um, and we see the impact of a lack of access and affordability in childcare on those families every single day. Um, if we had access to childcare slots, 
It would really give us alternatives for in-home safety planning for children involved in our child protective services. It would allow us to move more quickly to reunification when kids are placed in foster care um, and really get more permanency for children. Um, the children that are in quality child care, we know are better prepared when they enter school, both socially, emotionally, academically, uh, and that would really benefit the families that we're serving. The same is true for families that come to us for behavioral health care, children with special health care needs, and the many low-income families that we serve. It hits all of them really hard. Um, sadly, we do see some situations in which parents have to make choices to leave their kids in less than ideal situations. They might work shift work or weekends. Um, they patch together whatever they can in terms of having somebody watch their children. This does not create the stability that their children need and it often can impact their ability to maintain employment as well. Um, and you know, we see families that make decisions to leave kids with people that they barely know. They look on the internet for childcare providers. They leave children home alone much too young. Um, and sometimes they leave them with a new boyfriend who's not a safe choice. Um, and this really has dramatic consequences for the kids in our community. And we really think that we can do better. So thanks for being a part of this and um, helping us to find some solutions. Thank you, Corey. Um, next, we have Alexis Fuller. Alexis is the director of the Door Community Child Development Center. Hello. Um, so yeah, so we provide early childhood development for children ages six weeks to five years old. Um, and currently we have 24 full-time employees, 84 children enrolled, we serve about 75 families in the Door County area. Um, so thank you for taking the time to listen to community members about the importance of childcare. From the moment that I took the leap and announced my intent to open a childcare center last July, this group of people who will be speaking to you today along with so many more community members have rallied behind us in one way or another. Although many can share experiences related to childcare, I truly feel as though it's beyond past you that we hear firsthand from early childhood educators themselves. They are the foundation of a successful program. Early childhood educators want to have a meaningful career that they are passionate about, passionate about without sacrificing their personal well-being. An associate degree in early childhood education from NWTC is approximately $12,000. An average starting wage for an early childhood educator with an associate's degree is about $12.50 an hour. Um, so currently our center pays employees between $14.50 and $20 an hour. Um, our lead teachers start at $17 an hour and this is about $5 more than what they had been being paid um, in their previous employment. Um, this is just our starting point. As we all know, they deserve much more. Since opening in September, we have not had any staff turnover, which is unheard of in, in the childcare world. All the staff are thriving in their individual roles as well as collectively. For the first time in many, for many of us, we are taking a group training on emotional intelligence and well-being for the children and also for ourselves. And in many cases, the staff turnover um, in childcare centers makes this sort of training impossible. Um, we have had an outpouring of support from the community businesses the Door County Medical Center stepped up right away to support the Child Care Center. They have leased the building that we operate out of and subleased it back to us. We are very fortunate to have their continued support with building maintenance services. And I think that seeing the, kiddo the kiddos while at the center sure makes some of the toughest projects we give them worth, worth it. Um, the community in every single aspect has overwhelmingly supported us from supplying many car seats to provide safe transportation warm winter clothing for our children so they could enjoy the snow, to saving a little boy's birthday party after a tough move to a new house. They made Chris a Christmas miracle possible for a family after discovering their needs two days before Christmas, and also provided one of our families um, window plastic, warm blankets, and enough groceries for a month. The ability to reach out to people in Door County, be transparent about our needs, and see how quick they are to act has brought so much comfort during such a time of unknown. We have been grateful for the support from the relief stimulus through the Child Care Counts program. Part, part, to, part of the relief program was funding that we could be paid, um, paid out to our staff directly in the form of a bonus. Um, that was the full intent of it. The, it really helped our teachers. It was right around Christmas time. 
Um, many of them were able to support their families and um, actually buy presents this year. Um, so it's true that we have yet to fully accomplish dropping childcare tuition rates for all families. 80% of our tuition revenue goes towards staff wages. We fundraise much of our other needs. We are fortunate that families can receive state subsidy for our program. And fortunately that the United Way has helped us create a tuition scholarship, which will lower rates for 20 families. And the rates will be comparable to what they were five years ago. Um, yet with all that support, many of us in the childcare field are waiting for the other shoe to drop. Currently childcare has the spotlight. We feel heard, we feel seen, but for how long? We know that the bond with the community is solid, but we need support on all levels to be successful. Um, and lastly, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Mr. Rogers that we reference quite a bit. Um, we live in a world in which we need to share responsibility. It's easy to say, it's not my child, not my community, not my world, not my problem. Then there are those who see the need and respond. And I consider those people my heroes. Did I make it? <laughs> Not zero. Thank you, Alexis. Yep. So next, we have Brian Stevens, who's president and CEO of Door County Medical Center. Thanks, Christina. I appreciate everyone who's on tonight to hear about this important issue. Uh, it's personally, it's been a while since Amy and I have had to consider uh, child care options, but uh, I, I was on the board of the YMCA uh, when we decided to take on child care. And I was uh, also still on the board uh, when the financial model started to fall apart for that child care center and, and some of the changes that had to occur as a result of that. So had quite a bit of experience uh, seeing that, that side of it. Um, but more importantly, hopefully I'm here to represent the, the 700 employees uh, who work at Door County Medical Center, uh, which include dozens of families who need some form of child care. Um, including some that need childcare during evening shifts and night shifts and, and those sorts of things as well. Um, during the pandemic, uh, we experienced some of the challenges that Corey talked about uh, with the daycare closing uh, at the Y for, for a time period. Uh, we had nurses who were moving their shifts around and, and working together to try to cover each other's shifts so that they could also take care of each other's kids when they were not working. Um, we, we certainly had a lot of family members step up and, and help to take care of the kids of our, our caregivers so that they could continue to serve the community during the pandemic. Uh, but we knew that that wasn't sustainable long term and that we needed a, a good long term solution. And uh, fortunately, Alexis and her team uh, stepped right in and uh, were willing to, to take a risk. And they knew the, the fundraising that would be involved and they knew the uh, the, all the challenges really that would be involved and they've done a great job of making sure that more than 20 of our families can continue to receive child care at that location. So uh, that's been a success, but certainly all the things that Alexis said in terms of what they need for support going forward, uh, we want to continue to provide that support from DCMC, but, but we also need other businesses to step up and do the same and, and other community members and uh, potentially, you know, government and economic development solutions as, as well. Um, we do find in our recruiting at DCMC that licensed daycare is, is preferred. Uh, certainly we have a number of folks who are also cared for by family members and, and in-home caregivers who are not licensed. And uh, in many cases that works out well also, but uh, the preference in terms of those who we recruit is, is for licensed daycare. And then the other thing, and, and uh, Corey talked about this as well, and I'll reiterate it, we, we are also experiencing a baby boom at Door County Medical Center just amongst our, our workforce. And I think we're seeing that in the community as well. So one of the maybe positive impacts of the pandemic, uh, just so everyone knows, we're expecting a record month of births in the month of September at Door County Medical Center. And uh, that's great news for our community and great news for families and uh, potentially more challenges for, for daycare uh, in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for sharing the news about the baby boom. We <laughs> Everyone had suspicions, but I hadn't heard it confirmed. So thanks. Um, next we have Lori Torbeck. Lori is a child care provider at Door Community Child Development Center. Hi. I've been asked to speak to the um, value of the teachers and why we have such a high turnover among the teachers. I've been an early childhood professional, professional for over 40 years. For most of those 40 years, I have sought 
worthy wages for early childhood professionals, including seven years as a rep representative of Wisconsin Family Child Care, in, during which time we marched on the Capitol, we had parades downtown Appleton, we tried all different things we could to try to get um, the understanding from the legislators that that's why there's so much turnover from teachers is that their wages just aren't there. Um, there it, I've had 40 years of my family and myself sacrificing just so that I could follow my passion for children. I have 40 years plus of years of experience, a college education, as well as several professional certifications. And yet I now I'm making a reasonable wage, but until uh, Door Community, I was making just above minimum wage. So it's just not with, with those kind of credentials. How many other professions do you know where people are willing to, to settle for that? It takes, a, you know, special people um, my goal from the very beginning was to give the little ones in my care the best start in life. I take my role very seriously. I teach them social skills, including communication, using sign language before they can even verbally speak. Um, I also teach them to have empathy for others and how to solve conflicts peacefully. As the teacher of one-year-olds, it's more important to me that I teach them these social skills than it is academics at this age. Uh, these social skills are imperative to help them grow into successful and caring adults. Studies show that 90% of brain growth happens before kindergarten. That makes the job of an early childhood professional one of the most important jobs on this planet. Think about it. Children go from a helpless newborn dependent on others for their very existence to capable, intelligent beings that can sing and dance before they even turn three. That is why it's so important to have people teaching them that are passionate about the impact on the future of our children, our country, and our world. We have gone from a country that was united in our patriotism after 9-11 to one of violence and strife against one another. That also makes the job of early, professional, early childhood professionals even more important. Children who are taught empathy learn to care. Those taught fairness learn to be just. The more than 20 of my kids who have gone into law enforcement can attest to that. Who and who gave crayons to the first the first crayons to the designer, this clothing designer in New York that came from my child care. I mean, there's a lot of successful people that attribute their first skills to early childhood. Um, new research in Chicago's government funded child parent centers also tracked three and four year olds and found that children who did not have quality early childhood education were 70% more likely to be arrested for a violent crime by the age of 18. That is something this culture really needs to look at right now. Um, it also leads to, leads to savings for the taxpayers when we're not help, having to be responsible for housing those people that could have been helped by early childhood education. And finally, a part of the issue of early childhood education and the turnover is the wages again. I'm skilled as a welder. It's a hobby of mine. If I had, in, if I had pursued that as an education or as a profession, I could be making upwards of $35 an hour. A lot of teachers are forced to make those decisions. I was lucky to have a husband who was supportive of me and willing to take on supporting our family so that I could follow my passion of teaching children and giving them the best start in life. But I currently have a, a 20 month old in my class who can throw a ball with amazing accuracy. I envision him being a pro football player some day in the future. In fact, right, over, right out the door of the room. Um, I actually already told his mom I want season tickets when he becomes the quarterback in Green Bay. Um, but who taught him to throw that ball? Who tossed the first ball with him? You know, who's to say? I already, and uh, who taught the, the welders of this world to be creative? Who gave crayons to the artists for the first time? Early childhood professionals are very important, and yet we're very low in the pay scale. We do not make and I don't do it for the money, but I have two daughters that are now following me into this profession 
Both of my daughters are now early childhood professionals. One of them worked here with me at the daycare. And I want to see them in a world where what they do is valued for what they give to it, what they put into it. Thank you, Lori. I'm sorry we're out of time. Um, and I, I referred to Lori as a child care provider, but uh, in the introduction, but I agree, there are multiple terms. There are early childhood educators, that is just as appropriate, and um, a child care professional. I think those are, you. Th those words have meaning and they are accurate. And um, next we're gonna hear from Doug Marvin, who's a child care professional at Northern Door Children's Center up in Sister Bay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my journey was a little bit different into childcare. Um, I originally started out in hospitality, and that's how I ended up in Northern Door County. Um, I did obtain a bachelor's degree in um, pre-K through six education. Um, and when winter rolled around and there's no work up in Northern Door County, then um, uh, I found a position at NDCC, and uh, that's when I um, kind of fell in love with working with the children. Um, I've been there for just about four years now. Um, I'm a full-time lead uh, teacher, um, and um, we actually just got great news today. Um, we just got bumped up um, in our pay as well, so that's uh, good news for us. Um, and, um, but like uh, the previous speaker said that um, the wages were um, very difficult to live on. I'm a single dad with two boys and um, we get by and, uh, I, but um, it's very difficult and this is, you know, just another uh, blessing for us because we've had so many since we moved to Door County. Um, uh, we found it very difficult in Northern Door County. It's very difficult to find housing. So um, we were moving from house to house um, and we were lucky, lucky enough, uh, actually one of my directors at the center steered us towards Habitat and uh, we got a Habitat home last year that we helped build. So we were very lucky there. Otherwise, I have no idea, honestly, where we'd be living right now um, because the houses that we rent end up being sold. So, but, um, so we were very lucky. We'd have to, probably would have had to find a second job, I'm guessing, and struggle to pay for an expensive apartment. <laughs> um, the uh, cost of living is quite high, but I just, uh, I loved my position so much, I didn't want to give it up. Um, so we get by, we have to uh, cut corners, obviously, but uh, um, we get by pretty well. And um, like I said, now we're going to be doing a little better. So, um, but I just love working with the kids and um, I can't, think of about going back to waiting tables or cooking or doing any of that stuff. Um, it's just, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that we're getting a little recognition um, now and it's really coming out that uh, early childhood providers are so important and I don't know, I feel bad thinking of uh, maybe a pandemic for that. <laughs> Um, but that, you know, we really came to light in the pandemic when um, everybody was struggling. And I know we take care of a lot of teachers, kids during the day. So I just, I wonder if there's not enough childcare. And you're right, there is a baby boom because we're going to be overwhelmed with babies here in the next few months. Um, and uh, I know so many people in our community that are looking to get their children into the center and we just can't because we're tapped out, we're capped. Um, so I don't know, maybe if 
maybe some of us need to branch off and open our own place. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to how to solve that problem other than um, in home providers or you know maybe opening a new facility in Northern Door County somewhere. I don't know. I don't know how to solve that. But. Hey, Doug, we are out of time. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, next, we have Carly Martins. Carly is the Sturgeon Bay School Counselor. Uh, she works with 4K through second graders. Yes, hello. Um, I wanted to join today to kind of just give a brief overview of the kiddos that we have coming into school. So 4K um, is the first time that students start, um, children start school. And much like um, Alexis and Lori and Douglas have talked about, um, that strong foundation of early um, child care is so important. Um, we are seeing uh, increased needs in the social emotional department, which is I guess really good for me that I will have a job for a while. Um, but I, we, we are also very aware that we need more support in this area. Um, and um, much like Corey said as well, we see a lot of families that are struggling to find consistent childcare. And so then they are left with a neighbor or they are left home alone or they are left um, with somebody that they found on the internet that they know nothing about. Um, and that can be very traumatic for children. And because of those instances and those times that they are staying in the inconsistent, then they struggle as they age as well. And so that's really what we're seeing right now is the big focus on in 4K and in kindergarten is those social emotional skills as opposed to academics. Now, not saying that we don't teach academics, but a lot of the kids that come to us are not prepared for academics. And so we are meeting them where they are at, and we are meeting the families where they are at, and we are um, doing our best to meet those skills and um, support those families. And the more I um, work with these families as a whole, not just the students, um, I am realizing that certain, uh, Door County in general has some really fantastic resources for our families. We have a lot of support in a lot of areas. Um, which is great for families that are struggling. And I don't want those resources to go away by any means, but at that point we're firefighting. And I'm wondering if, if in looking at the childcare concerns that we have in our community, if we can put more emphasis on the early learning, then we can be more preventative in our work, which is something that I am constantly striving to do is more prevention versus fighting the fires and working. Um, I can also speak as a parent. So um, I have two young boys as well. And we, um, my husband and I moved up here two years ago now. And when we moved, um, the child care center had a two year wait list. And so I just still don't think my time's up. Um, but it's one of those things that um, we as well have gone through our fair share of child care concerns. And um, I know I'm not alone in talking even to families this summer, um, kids that are child or school aged are struggling to find care for the summer for the parents that work year round. And um, it, it's definitely a community concern. It's more than just those of us with children um, or those of us that work directly with children because it, it can definitely the whole community um, getting employees to come in and um, yeah, so I, I think from the school perspective, we really just need a little extra support um, in these early learning years because it you're exactly right, the brain research is there. Um, there's a ton of it. I'd be happy to chat with anybody about that afterwards. <laughs> um, but it's definitely um, a need and getting some stability and learning those basic social emotional skills um, is really important for these little kiddos to be successful, not just in school, but in life. Thank you, Carly. Yeah, you can talk with Carly afterwards, or you can check out Carly's talk at one of our town hall meetings on YouTube. And we also devoted a whole meeting to the brain science. So um, lots of resources to learn about that for people. 
Next, we have Morgan Mann. Morgan is a parent and she works as the community relations library assistant at um, Door County Library. Hello, thank you so much for having um, this forum. It's an important topic. Um, from the library's perspective, um, we have seen um, more kids being dropped off and um, the library being used as a daycare of sorts. Uh, specifically in different locations, we have eight branches um, as far south as Forestville and all the way up onto Washington Island. Of course, after school, um, it is a time when, when kids come and it's completely okay to come to the library after school and that sort of thing. Um, but under the age of eight, um, we really, we require a guardian to be there. And there are some instances where parents will drop off children and, or the children will just come because it's a safe place. And we are required to um, have law enforcement or call other services to come and help um, have the correct guardianship with the children. So that has been an issue longer than this has been an issue. Um, I've only been at the library for about three, four years now. And I know it's been an ongoing topic in the library world in general um, that this situation type happens. Um, on a personal note, um, we moved here to Sturgeon Bay about 15 years ago. I had a six month old at the time. We came from the city and I had expectations of having childcare and working from home at least a few days a week. And there were only really two spots at that time that were fully booked and they really did not allow you to have partial days. You either had to sign up for um, a full week or it was, it was completely cost prohibitive for the type of work that I was doing and the amount of time um, just because I also wanted to stay home with my kids too. Um, my husband worked full time out of the house so it was completely on me and what I ended up doing was um, staying up late. So I would work in the night and then I would wake up in the morning and be with the kiddos while still changing diapers and breastfeeding in the middle of the night um, and working. And um, of course it was exhausting and you never know how you find all your energy, but you end up doing it. And I was lucky enough to have um, in-laws that could pop in from time to time and help, but they also worked full-time jobs and um, I couldn't consistently count on that to um, sustain my business in that way. Um, it wasn't until, until my youngest was in kindergarten that I was able to work, work full time. And because of that now, I have health benefits for my family where previously we paid everything out of our own pocket. So, um, and I'm also lucky enough to have a husband with a flexible job. Um, so we have schedules that work for us. If a child is sick at school or during the pandemic, they needed to get more help on computer, uh, he was able there to help. Um, I don't know how anyone does it um, without having a lot of money for a nanny or for child care or for camps and all the other things that people use to fill the summer hours. Um, many become latchkey kids and are responsible for themselves or they have strong family support network that is able to and available to help. Um, if I would have stayed in the city, uh, my place of employment had a daycare on the lower level of my staff, uh, the building for the staff. I would have been able to see my child whenever I wanted. Plus they had pumping rooms, they had a concierge service that could pick up my dry cleaning and other amenities that made work-life balance actually manageable. That was a consideration. I would say after the second child was born, we considered moving back to the city because it was just unsustainable to live here. Um, and uh, speaking from the standpoint of brain drain and that sort of thing, we were a young family. My husband's from this area originally, I am not from here. And I was not entirely sold on staying here. Um, so if, if you wanna keep young professionals in the area, this does need to be solved. And I don't know what the answer is, but um, there needs to be more options and it needs to be affordable. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. Next, we have Dr. Eric Paulson, who is the owner, owner of Door County Eye Associates. Thanks, Christina. I, um, <clears throat> I'm coming tonight with a couple different childcare hats on and as you can see by the color of my beard, I've been around for a while. And when my children were young 30 years ago, I was uh, president of the board of our local child care center. So I've seen the inner workings of child care and I understand uh, all the different issues that it takes to run a good child care center. And I think, of course, that 
the pay level is probably the number one issue. So kudos to you guys for making that happen in Sturgeon Bay. But I also want to really talk about child care from an employer's viewpoint because it's really affected my business. <clears throat> I've had a really great employee that uh, was very talented and had three children and uh, really had a child care crisis in her life. And after searching high and low for many weeks, she ended up leaving my business as an employee. And it was a real blow to our business and uh, really something I can tell you, we haven't gotten over yet completely because of course this is uh, not a time to find highly qualified employees, it's, it's tough. And so um, as an employer, uh, childcare has affected my business. And it's, uh, I, I've talked to other people that I try to bring into Sturgeon Bay to work for me and uh, believe it or not, childcare becomes an issue. And it, so it keeps haunting me in the background. And I, and I wonder as a community or as a society, how can we work to solve this issue? Because Sturgeon Bay is not the only place that has childcare issues. And so I know there are many creative ways to address this problem, but I look for uh, something that's affordable for the community that provides good quality daycare, and that's a real challenge. Thank you, Eric. Um, now we have Missy Allen, who is the HR manager and sales manager at Jim Olson Motors. Good evening, and thank you for the time and allowing us the opportunity for this meeting. As Christina said, I'm the general sales manager for the three Jim Olson Motors of Door County Automotive Dealerships. I'm also on the board of directors for Door County, and I've served on the child care task force for the last several months. Working on the task force has been very eye-opening for me. Our three Jim Olson Motors locations employ approximately 80 people. As you might imagine, being a car dealership, the majority of our workforce is male. The mechanics, the technicians, body shop, and even to a lesser degree, sales associates. So in addition to being mainly male, we also have an aging workforce. Although we have on occasion been forced to seek new employees within a larger radius outside of Door County, the majority of our hires are made from within the Door County area. As one might imagine, it does appear that often childcare and necessary arrangements for childcare appear to be the responsibility of many mothers in the majority of households. That being the case with our companies, mainly male workforce, I would say it may have only been in the last couple of years that we've begun to realize the benefits that could be reaped by helping our employees, many of them young fathers, to have some flexibility in their schedules to assist with caring for their children. It was not until recently that we've started to see employees who are fathers who are required to stay at home with sick children, for example. Much of this became more obvious with the onset of COVID and the number of days that children were required to miss school or daycare and stay at home with symptoms while they were waiting for their test results. My personal involvement with the Child Care Task Force as well as my personal experience with my own seven grandchildren have helped me to have a better understanding of what our employees are often going through. It's allowed me to have better conversations with employees surrounding flexible work schedules and accommodating time off. However, the one constant that I see in our employees' stories is their pursuit for childcare, that it's hard to find providers. Frequently, families can be left questioning the quality of care their children are receiving each day. And lastly, that at least unless they can find a grandparent or other close family member who's willing to provide childcare for free, it's often too costly if they even can find the childcare in Door County. These family conversations can frequently become about a parent no longer working outside the home, perhaps needing to reduce work hours, or even requiring a grandparent to retire early to help provide the daily care that's needed. 
It frequently occurs to me that flexibility of scheduling or understanding of missing work to care for sick children is a very, very small part of what our employees' families really need in the area of child care to be able to continue to work in the Door County area. Door County needs to be able to offer some help with the availability of high quality child care at an affordable price for our workforce to be successful. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Missy. Um, next, we have Miles Danhausen, who's also a new parent. And Miles, we want to know if you've got him stuffed in the back seat there. Uh, and he's also co-owner of the Peninsula Pulse. Uh, thanks, Christina. Um, no, Connor is not in the back seat of the car with me here. <laughs> I was uh, I was a little late <clears throat> trying to coordinate pickup today, so I'm sitting on the side of the road by myself. Um, as you said, I am co-owner of the Peninsula Pulse and I work for the Peninsula Pacers and Event Company and I'm also the president of Right On Door County so of the board of directors there so I've seen this issue um, from an employer standpoint with many new parents in our office um, even with our event company of people trying to work part-time to try and cobble together work for us and then also as a nonprofit director we've dealt with this and it, it's really difficult with a small nonprofit to try and help your nonprofit exists while you you have somebody who has a young child. Um, but I, a lot of business owners here have talked about it from the employer perspective. So I'll tell a little of my story. Um, when my wife and I finally got uh, pregnant, we, after the stress of uh, a struggle to get pregnant, we immediately moved into the stress of what the heck happens when we need childcare. And we got on the wait list at Northern Dora Children's Center. We live up in Sister Bay. We got on that wait list as soon as we knew we were pregnant. And that was at the behest of many friends who said, get on that wait list and get on now and call them often and keep checking in. And you kind of plead your case as a, a prospect, a parent prospect to be part of the community. And you almost sell yourself like, hey, we're gonna be full time. We, we're gonna sign up for five days, we're in, we're, we're gonna have another kid like you want us in here um, to try and make sure that, that you're making the best case possible. We both work full time. My we my wife has a pretty demanding job and needed to be able to to get back to the office and ready to go at the three month point. Um, and and we recognize we're incredibly lucky that she had even the three months of leave. Um, we looked at hiring a provider in home because we couldn't confirm that we were going to get into Northern Drove Children's Center. Um, so up to two weeks before she was going back to work, we were still juggling whether we were gonna be spending 15 to $20 an hour to hire someone to come into the home or try and cobble it together with um, other employers or, or other employees of mine and try to split a, a nanny or a daycare provider of some sort. Um, it was pretty stressful. And then we got the call that we were in indeed at Northern Door Children's Center. And in part of that, we moved to the front of the line. A lot of people wait three, six, nine months to get in. Um, I think COVID helped us because a lot of my friends dropped off the list and just people left their job to be a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad. So it opened up slots for us. So COVID worked out really well for us from a daycare pr perspective, um, terribly in pretty much every other aspect. Um, there was also my wife in the post-pregnancy period, she ended up having multiple surgeries post-pregnancy, uh, post-birth. Um, and she was fortunate enough to be a, a strong advocate for herself for medical care and persistent to um, get the care she needed. And I, the reason I bring that up is because when, um, when my brother had his, my, I have an older brother who just had his first child. He lives in Brussels, Belgium. Um, always have to be clear on that. But the stress of pregnancy wasn't there for them. They had they didn't have to worry about the finances of having the child in the first place. After birth, his wife has mandatory physical therapy. And in the second day after they got home, I called him on FaceTime and they had just got the, the first home visit from the nurse who comes to check in and see how the wife is doing, make sure everything's healthy there, that she's doing her therapy and that the baby is doing well. And you compare that to the experience we had where you have to be a strong advocate to make sure you get the care you need so you don't end up with a surgery down the road. Um, and then when he looks ahead to when they send their child to daycare, when they need daycare, they have the option of the free publicly provided health daycare, or they can pay the premium for, I suppose, a premium service, but they say that the, the 
the public daycare is great there. So you look at the stress levels of all those different aspects that he does not have um, and we do. And that's what's possible if you just kind of rethink what what the baseline of, of child care has to be. Um, and then lastly, I'll say that every day I drop my son off at Northern Door Children's Center. And when I do, the the person who comes to the door, every person, including if it is the director or the uh, the second in line or the, the number two at the Children's Center, all of them, based on their own income without a spouse's income, would qualify for the subsidized housing that's going to be built right behind the front doors of that center. So that is what we are paying the people that we are leaving our kids with every single day. Even the directors of that place would qualify for subsidized housing, which which is really eye-opening, I think, to the, the root of the problem when we talk about turnover and the availability and affordability. Thank you, Miles. Uh, next, we have Alexis Hine Peter, who's also a parent. She works for the DNR and she is also a Door County Board Supervisor. Good evening, and thank you again for listening um, and having us here tonight. Um, my family chose Door County about four years ago as a place to live, work, recreate, and raise a family. Almost two years ago, I decided to apply for county board because I don't want another family trying to start out here to go through what we had to go through for housing and childcare access. Being a part of United Way of Door County's discussions for the last 15 months, I've learned our experience was one of the more mild ones. We started applying for childcare centers six months before we needed it. We were new with no family in the area and no connections to the in-home network. In March, uh, before I went back to work in April, we were accepted to Northern Door Child Care Center. We live in Sturgeon Bay. So three months later, nine months after we applied, we were accepted to the Barker Center at the time. And for our family logistics and to alleviate the 80 minutes a day my child was spending in the car, we decided to transfer centers at that point. I will, <laughs> I had to turn my camera off a couple times because I got so emotional, I apologize. So pardon me, um, I will never be able to fully express my love and appreciation for the experience, education, love, and sense of family that we have had at both centers in the county. I will also never fully recover from the frantic stress and trauma of the unknown I was bringing my child into. For all of the planning, coordinating, and anticipation that you can do means nothing if the infrastructure you thought you could rely on is not there, is not accessible, or is not affordable. Every parent deserves the opportunity to achieve their goals as a member of society, whether that means working away from the home or in the home, and as a parent, whether that means relying on external child care, family, neighbors, or a combination. Without access to quality, affordable child care, with this, um, sorry. Without access to quality, affordable childcare with a steady, well-respected workforce, parents are being forced, are being failed by the system they try to support every day. As a working mom of one, the decision for more kids is really not in my hands right now. There are so many barriers and considerations for raising a family in Door County, it's really tough. And again, we're the typical nine to five working family, um, for what the system is supposed to be designed for, and it's not working. As an elected official, I want to support this community and bring solutions for families, whatever the situation may be for our state and our federal elected leaders. I want you to hear the calls of your neighbors and work diligently on a responsible common sense solution, whether it's training programs for early childhood educators, raising the minimum wage across the board, increasing state funding for centers and in-home networks or better support systems for all families. You literally cannot spend too much money and every dollar invested to training, early education and childcare infrastructure will pay back. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Next, we have Ryan Shaw. Ryan is the parent, is a parent. And if I have this right, Ryan, you're the owner of the Glass Coffee Shop? Uh, manager. Manager, okay. Well, I just gave you a promotion. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to the United Way for uh, putting this together and to our guests for being here and obviously all of the child care professionals that are on in this. Thank you for all that you do. Um, it's so important. 
Um, so my wife and I, our son is a little over three years old. When uh, Finn was born in 2018, my wife and I then were part of what I call the Door County, I don't know, the hodgepodge making a living. Um, I worked at Gloss. I uh, did and still do uh, trivia with Bricklot. My wife worked at um, a retail uh, art gallery during the day and summers in the evening she worked at Northern Sky. So a very, what I think of as, you know, typical Door County, you work a million jobs to make it go. We choose to live here because we love living here. Um, when Finn was born, we were, like many other people we've heard tonight, we were on that all-important waiting list, and we couldn't get on, couldn't get on, couldn't get in. And fortunately, um, we had a woman who we knew who was interested in doing one-on-one -on -one daycare for Finn. Uh, about two months into her doing this, she informed us that we had two weeks to go. Um, uh, that she was not going to do it. She was going to resume substitute teaching. And we had two weeks to figure out our child care. Um, like many parents, uh, we panicked. Uh, didn't know what to do. Put the calls in. Uh, I can fortunately say Finn has been in a wonderful in-home situation now since he was about four and a half, five months old. But we got the phone call from the woman that, she, that he's with that she had space while my wife was on a walk with her then boss, um, who is also a friend of ours, um, that walk was going to be her telling him, hey, I can't work for you anymore. Um, we couldn't afford to, uh, to not have my wife working, but we also couldn't afford not to take care of our brand new son. Um, so we, 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 we got lucky. We got very lucky. Um, that took care of our weekdays, um, that did not take care of our weekends. I think that's something that hasn't really been discussed a lot. Door County is, you know, the Midwest's playground. We give a lot, a lot of young professionals give a lot to make Door County special. Your people who are serving you, your people who are making your drinks behind the bar, be that coffee like myself, or drinks after a long day of hanging out and having fun in Door County, those people need support too. That's on the weekends. That's on nights. That it's a unique problem to Door County, being what we are. We are a tourist destination. I, I there was a lot that was just made of Door County yet again being called the Cape Cod of the Midwest. We can't have that if we don't find ways to support people who are working on the weekends, which we have to have. So that's our big problem that I see is. Um, or weekends. Fortunately for us, um, my wife made a career transition. She works uh, for the Sturgeon Bay School District now, so we are in a much better situation for ourselves, but I know many people who are struggling with those same things, the weekends, the evenings, not knowing what to do. We, um, before my wife transitioned to the school, we had what I called our uh, coffee shop ants, and my wife was literally on Sundays, that was our big trouble day, she was on Sunday afternoons, or excuse me, mornings, dropping our son off with customers that I was very close with, that I knew that we could trust, that my wife had never met, because she, we didn't know what else to do. We were on the phone the night before, going through our Rolodex of our Door County, or our coffee shop aunts and uncles, and pleading with them to watch Finn for six hours, because we didn't know what we would do. So, fortunately, we made it work, but we... I don't really know how, looking back at it. So um, they, I know that this is being worked on tirelessly, um, and I know that this community can find a solution. So it, everything that is being done is so appreciated. And thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Um, I will just briefly comment that a, a theme that I am picking up on is that we have a lot of lucky parents joining us tonight. And um, although that's nice, I wonder how many unlucky parents we don't have uh, joining us tonight. So next we have uh, Jill Harkaway, who is a grandparent, if I've got that right. But Jill, you can introduce yourself more. <laughs> Yes, I, I am a grandparent, and my experience of child care in Door County is actually twofold. I'm also the director of the Peninsula Preschool up in Ephraim. Um, my husband and I provide care for our grandchildren 
full time five days a week for my two year old granddaughter and after school for my nine year old grandson. Three years ago, I moved to Door County to be our, near our daughter, Jess, and her family. At that time, our son-in-law was, was taught part-time outside of the home. My husband volunteered to take care of our newborn granddaughter a few hours, a couple of days a week. We didn't expect that the need for our care would have grown so much over time. A new career, as new career opportunities opened up for Jess and her husband, their need for care increased. If we had not been able to arrange our schedules, they would not have been able to advance their careers or their income. Um, Babysitting is giving me a, an opportunity to bond deeply with my grandchildren. I've shared my love of cooking with my grandson and my love of reading and singing with my granddaughter. My background in early childhood education helped me to set up home environment uh, to meet the developmental needs of a toddler granddaughter. A visitor at my house will see a crib and a diaper changing table in our front hall. Blocks, fine motor activities, and toys have taken over the living room. The dining room table is set up for art projects, and there's a swing and a play kitchen gracing our backyard. We go on walks where our granddaughter rides her tricycle there, and we carry her and the tricycle back. My weekends are spent rearranging activities to promote growth and learning during the week. Um, I really never thought I would be potty training a child at this stage of my life. Um, all of these activities are exhausting, but very satisfying. Our lives have been rearranged to meet the needs of a two-year-old. Uh, when my husband is caring for clients and as a home care advocate, um, I am unable to run a quick errand, I can't work productively in a garden, and I can't make appointments. Our granddaughter is our number one priority during the day. We help her with social skills and fine motor skills. We work to meet her emotional needs with love and patience. We play outdoors and engage in gross motor activities in order to strengthen her physical development. And we try to focus on good nutrition when all she asks for are sugary snacks. We struggle to get her to nap. And babysitting really isn't all play and there's very little sitting involved. As director of the Peninsula Preschool, I watch families piece together childcare that works for them. Our parents are the backbone of the community, working as entrepreneurs, they're in community service, tourism, the arts, and so much more. They have determined that a half-day play-based preschool program is the best fit for the care and education of their children. But we are just one piece of a puzzle that includes grandparents, extended family, and flexibility from everyone to put together the hours of care that they need. Many of our parents struggle with affordability, and so the school struggles trying to raise funds in order to provide scholarships uh, to families with need. When I moved to Door County, I accepted a 25% reduction in salary to teach at the Peninsula Preschool. I chose not to be compensated by my daughter for the care that I gave my grandchildren. Until there's enough affordable quality childcare in Sturgeon Bay, we will continue to make do with less free time, personal space and income so our children can have more. And for now, hugs and kisses are my reward. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And next we have just Is my Hawkins. computer lagging. It's, um, can yeah, you hear me? Yes, you're, you're, you are good. Thank you so much. Um, next, Christina, we have, can you hear me? Am I, am I coming through? You're good, ma'am. <laughs> so take it, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I have to follow all those nice things that my mom just said, which is <laughs> giving me all the good feels. Uh, but I'm a social worker, um, I'm on the school board in Sturgeon Bay, and I'm a gigging musician. Uh, like my mom said, my 
My husband is an educator. He's an artist and he owns a fly fishing guide company. So um, we're busy with professional pursuits, um, but that's partially because we had to hustle <laughs> um, to make a schedule that worked for our family for a really long time with a lot of part-time jobs um, that fit about around what was available for childcare and what we could afford. Um, this is the first time that we both have full-time jobs, um, which is amazing. Uh, so thank you, mom. So part of how we got here though, um, I have a nine-year-old son, Everett, and a two-year-old daughter, Nova, that keeps my mom uh, from sitting down during the day. Um, so when I was pregnant with my son, my husband and I were too green to understand we had to look for daycare <laughs> really before he was born. Um, so I was on maternity leave for about three months and by the end of that we hadn't found daycare. So at that point my husband stopped working and he stayed home with our son. Um, and that was great for a while, but um, then, you know, he wanted more as an adult human being. So we, um, he went back to work, but only part-time because we could only find part-time childcare. There was a wait at the Barker Center. So we had some friends that were really generous um, and watched our son um, and gave us a really discounted rate. Um, and and we also, like Ryan was saying, called on a lot of people that are not childcare providers to fill in the gaps um, pretty often, probably weekly, uh, mainly friends without kids <laughs> that could come over and watch Everett. Um, that seems to worked out fine. So, but um, so we were relieved when the Barker Center called and he was able to go in there. Um, it still wasn't full time though. So um, we continued to work part time and at night doing our own entrepreneurial things. When I was pregnant with my daughter, I knew to call the Barker Center earlier. So um, I was due in September. I called late February and we were put on a wait list and told essentially um, in a really nice way not to hold our breath. Um, so we called and checked back a couple times, um, but as the, my due date approached, we got really desperate because there wasn't any childcare. At that time, um, I told my mom about a job at the Peninsula Preschool and convinced her and my dad to move up, but they were in the middle of selling their house in Illinois still. So um, by the, in December, my daughter was born in September, um, I stretched out my FMLA as long as possible and told my dad he had to move up um, as soon as possible. And they still didn't have housing really. So he essentially moved into my 980 square foot house with my family of four um, and lived with us until they were able to get housing so that he could provide childcare for my daughter, which was wonderful and selfless. Um, but he also is not trained. I thought maybe my mother's training would have rubbed off on him. Um, and it did eventually, but at first it was scary, honestly, <laughs> um, having a newborn with a grandfather that, you know, didn't remember how to change diapers or how to feed a baby. Um, and I was called home a couple times, um, which was, I was glad to be able to do that. <laughs> um, but it, you know, I, I'm so lucky. My children are so lucky, but it also creates a really interesting dynamic. Um, you know, my parents are graceful about it all, but I wish that I, you know, the financial part, um, even though we are working full time and I do try to compensate them with a lot of love and uh, whatever they'll accept. Um, it's definitely a different dynamic than if they were just grandparents and we were able to have childcare. Um, so thank you all for listening to all of us talk. This is an important subject and we all come from a different perspective. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jess. Um, next we have Patty Vickman, who is the superintendent of Southern Door County School District. Thank you. I'd like to thank United Way for taking this uh, very important issue under wing uh, to the legislators and the government officials who are joining us this evening to learn more about uh, the situation here in Door County, and I have really enjoyed listening to so many stories. I don't know if Lauren is still on with Rosella. It might be time to be in bed, but 35 years ago, 
I was where Lauren was. I almost didn't continue my career in teaching. And it was because we lived without family around and were it not for the YMCA deciding that if they could expand for three more babies, that I was able to have my son be in childcare. And I think about how different my life would be if I had not had that support from the community coming forward. Um, you know, so much has been said about early childhood. I started out as a kindergarten teacher, so my love is definitely in that area. And I worked in another community establishing community-based childcare systems. And, but it really takes a village. It takes everybody coming to the center with a common focus on we need to do this for our community. It, it takes our employers working together, as you heard um, the lady from Olson talk about. It takes grandparents coming together. It takes schools. Um, it takes parents. It takes flexibility. It takes lots of things. We don't have much in Southern Door for high quality childcare. We have a very small childcare center that serves a very limited amount. Uh, otherwise people are having to go to Luxembourg, uh, to Green Bay, to Sturgeon Bay uh, to find childcare. At school, we've had to put in a before school program because we have parents who need to be to work by 7.30 and so we need to open up our doors and have staff on site to have something in place for seven o'clock, especially for our youngest uh, children. That's the school age children. Um, we wrote a federal grant and have a 21st century community learning center. That is every day after school from 3.15 to 5.30. Again, we needed to do that because we were having parents have difficulty with childcare. My bus drivers will tell you that on a daily basis, parents have their work schedules changed and they need to drop kids off for childcare at grandparents' houses, at uncles' and aunts' houses, at a neighbor's house, because something has changed in the life of the parent and they're unable to be home at their usual time. You know, there's lots we can say about what happens with brain research, nobody can argue that, and about the difference when a child grows up in a nurturing environment that fosters literacy and vocabulary development, and then what happens to children who don't have that environment and their readiness for school. I've had two employees this year that resigned at the beginning of the year, not because they were afraid to be here with COVID, but because they needed to stay home to do school with their grandchildren who were in other districts where school was not happening. I have two people that are currently employees that will be staying home as full-time moms next year because they cannot find childcare. Um, it has limited our substitute pool because substitutes who may be retired teachers, um, as I think someone said, they were able to find a teacher to take care of their children during the summer. Uh, somebody mentioned, you know, that there are funds with Fund 80. Fund 80 is very limited. It has a lot of strings attached. And again, it, it puts a burden on the taxpayer if a school district is even able to utilize those funds uh, for child care kinds of things. Today, I had a middle school principal tell me that she has a sixth grader who is not excited about summer beginning. And when she talked to the sixth grader, it's because the sixth grader will now be in charge of all the other children at home this summer because mom works in the service industry. And so mom can now work full time in summer. So the student was, you know, was saying that the student will be taking care of all of the kids. And of course, that's something that that student's peers do not have to deal with but was also sad about the fact that in order for him to see mom, it's going to be less time because that's the only way that she can get her work and things like that. So I think it's really important that we come together. I know Miles mentioned uh, Belgium. There's lots of the other countries. We even have some states 
where a greater emphasis has been put on early childhood education and the importance of us providing that kind of assistance, whether it's the childcare wages, uh, whether it's the training or whether it's coming together and establishing cooperatives or consortiums where we are creating new child care centers. You know, the science is very clear. When kids have that opportunity, they can do anything. I'm continually amazed at our youngest children, our middle school children and our high school children about the possibilities and the opportunities that are ahead of them if they only have the support. But when families are stressed, children experience that stress and it then affects them in their mental health in their ability to thrive as well. I guess I'm gonna close out by saying if we want a healthier, stronger and a more equitable Door County, we need to come together and do something about this. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. And the, the last person we have on our list of people who said they wanted to speak was Steve Jenkins. Um, once Steve is finished, we'll probably have a few minutes left and we might have one or two people um, who also want to, to speak, but uh, we'll go ahead and give Steve his time. He's the executive director of Door County Economic Development Corporation. Thanks, Christina. Good evening, everyone. I know we're toward the end of um, this wonderful time of sharing. Um, I think we should, there's not much I can add uh, to the testimonials that we've heard. Um, they're heartfelt. Um, at times, they tug at your heart. I'm going to kind of give you an overview, though, as an economic developer, why child care is important and why we um, work closely with United Way on this issue. There are three, and, and you've heard me say this before, some of you, there are three new infrastructures for economic development. Broadband, and some of you experience not having good broadband service tonight. Um, affordable housing, and then childcare. Those are the new infrastructures for economic development and many times they're interrelated. Uh, one of the things that really touched me tonight came from Douglas talking about, here's a dedicated childcare provider who's caring for our children. He shouldn't have to say, I could get by. He should not have to say that, but many do because they're dedicated professionals and they deserve every bit of thanks that we can muster for them. But he and others should not have to say, I get by. And at the same time, as a, as a community, we should look at our priorities in terms of what's important for our future. These children, as mentioned, uh, early childhood learning is so critical to setting the path forward for these children and therefore establishing our community as a prosperous place to live. You know, I've, I've seen childcare in my 46 years discussed the same way. It's been around that long and we've been kicking the can around trying to find solutions, but we keep using the same approaches, hoping that it'll just get better. A little more of this or a little more of that will make it better. I think there is a point in time when we say we have to look at this in a different way. Dr. Paulson mentioned we have to look at creative solutions. And I totally agree with him. I, I think that otherwise we continue to hope that the future will be better if we just tweak it here or tweak it there, or we, or we do something uh, instead of looking at it in an innovative uh, way of saying, what can we do as a community to make this sustainable, affordable, and highest quality? Because that should be important to us as a community. Those children at those ages that we've been discussing tonight are our greatest resource. Yet we, we underpay the very workers that have to work with these children help them to learn, give them the skills that are necessary. 
and we're, we're just, our priorities seem to be in the wrong place. It's time to change that. Thank you, Steve. I'm sorry, sure. I hate to cut you off. But Not a problem. We, uh, Joel said he would like to speak and I wanna make sure that we leave time for that. So um, Joel, do you wanna go ahead and take the floor? Yeah, I'll just speak very briefly. Um, you know, I, I went through the childcare thing with my kids many years ago. In fact, Dr. Paulson and I, I think our daughters were in there together way back. Um, we had our challenges, but certainly the, the shortage wasn't as severe back then as it is now. But one thing that hasn't changed is that back then I was always in awe that they were able to find these highly qualified professionals knowing that they, they were not making very much money. You know, the economic model, it just, it, it doesn't work very well. It, it, it never has really. Um, you know, a lot's been said, and, I, and I've been involved in education a good bit. I was on the Sturgeon Bay School Board for a long time, and I've been the vice chairman of the education committee for four sessions now. Um, the, the stuff that was said about brain development is, is certainly true. I mean, we know that, that if, if kids aren't in, a, in, a, in an environment where they're stimulated, by the time they reach third and fourth grade, they, their brains have not developed, and, and they're and they may never catch up. So I think there, you know, we understand that, that we need to be reaching kids earlier. When I was on the school board, I, I formed the committee that started four-year-old kindergarten in, in Sturgeon Bay, which we wanted to do to reach people, kids earlier. But the downside of that has been that with four-year-old kindergarten, and then, then all day four-year-old kindergarten, and now they talk about three-year-old kindergarten, it also really damages the, the, the child care centers you know, economically. So, uh, you know, we have to find that balance. Um, I think that there is really a place for all of us in, in coming up with a solution to this. You know, I, as, as much of a shortage as there is with workers right now, I would hope that we can, one of the solutions will be that we can get some of the businesses to come together to you know, form cooperatives. Because I think if, if businesses could offer childcare, they certainly would, would have a much easier time you know, finding employees. I really do commend, you know, last year when when the YMCA, when it wasn't working for them to be in childcare anymore, I really commend those that, that stepped up. Brian Stevens is on here, I know, Alexis, because um, that's, it, it really is important that we have that, that high quality childcare. So again, I think there's, there's a role for state government, for federal government, but also for, for our businesses. And I, and I hope we can work together. This was a lot of very powerful testimony tonight. So thanks for organizing this. Thank you. Um, Senator Jack, I just, before we go out, I just wanted to give you the opportunity if you want to say something, you don't have to. No, I appreciate that. I mean, it is helpful to hear these stories. Unfortunately, they're similar to what we're experiencing uh, not only throughout my district, throughout the state, throughout the country. Uh, I had the experience of the National Conference of State Legislatures to be an early learning fellow last session. And we had a number of conferences and we were able to speak to professionals. And of course, we've also seen, as I'm sure many of you have, the movie No Small Matter. And the issues that we have with being able to attract and retain uh, a workforce uh, in an area, frankly, it has to be a passion. It has to be against, you know, really almost, the, you know, your best economic interest to go into that field of human services. And uh, you know, that's a, that's an issue, honestly, you know, workforce challenges, we have workforce housing issues, we have general issues in the public sector, the private sector, and every industry in terms of more people leaving the, the, the workforce than are, than are entering it. Um, but then how do we, uh, you know, really help those that are, that are in it as well as, you know, then the, the challenge is not just, as I said, there's kind of more the, the niche challenge of how, how do you, even start to try to help those that have children with special needs? And how do you help those that are on various forms of public assistance that have childcare that are potentially going to lose it if they try to take any sort of position or, or opportunity to increase their, their family revenue? Um, and quite frankly, you know, a lot of the work that I've done uh, legislatively in the past deals with how do we try to eliminate some of those disincentives and benefit cliffs. So, uh, there's no easy answers on this one, although there is more attention and it is something where, uh, you know, I, I think we have some legislative attention on this. Uh, I, I, I think we're moving in the right direction from a policy standpoint, particularly within this budget in terms of how we, we change uh, the way that, that some of those childcare funds 
are spent as well as an influx of some additional dollars. And, and part of that is the, the birth to five uh, funding that uh, the state is qualified for. And part of that is, uh, you know, the other, the other federal funds that are available and funds that we have the, the chance to invest uh, just from the state being in a, a better budget situation. But, uh, you know, certainly this is, this is an area that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a priority. Unfortunately, uh, we have kind of that chicken and egg situation of, you know, how do we help, you know, especially as a lot of child care centers did go out of business with the, the, the pandemic and how do we encourage people to, to come back into that profession that have now found higher paying jobs elsewhere. And, uh, you know, right now there is such fierce competition in the workforce, um, you know, and we don't have, you know, until that baby boom that, that Brian was talking about uh, hits the workforce in, in 18 years, we're going to have some struggles. So, um, you know, hopefully there'll be enough. But, um, and I just see a comment here about eliminating disincentives. And I, I have... Uh, listed some some graduate students too on, on how we can deal with some benefit cliffs. There's a, a state representative uh, that's been working with NCSL as well on on that. So we'd love to work with you on that. And uh, I, I know we're kind of past the end of our time here, but uh, no, certainly I uh, think that there was, um, you know, just a, a lot of value in getting us all together. To uh, thank you so much. Yeah, that, that is a great um, transition because we Number one, we, we thank you for listening to us. Um, I thank everyone for coming together and making time tonight to share your stories. Um, it's amazing how many different stories uh, were shared within the hour and a half, but there are some similar themes. Um, we know times are, are challenging in some ways. Um, the industry is facing the same challenges they did 35 to 40 years ago. It's kind of sad. Um, it definitely shows that we do need some innovative new solutions, as Steve said. And we know that working with our elected officials is definitely going to be required in order to achieve some of those solutions and make a difference. So we thank you so much for meeting with us tonight. We look forward to continuing conversations with you. Um, of course, you know, come back anytime as things open up and we're able to meet face to face. We would love to continue these these conversations and everyone who is on the, the call, this work continues. Um, so if you want to get involved or just follow what's going on um, with the work that United Way is doing, but it is we're, we're just convening the larger community um, because we know it's so important and we're happy to serve that role but it does take the community. That's how um, everything has happened that we've achieved in the past 15 months. So reach out to me and Amy to talk about that. Um, once again, thank you all so much for your time. I will happy to hang on the line for people who wanna talk more, but otherwise um, we'll call it an end to the evening. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, David. Take care of that little.